All right, now I'm recording things three different ways. I'm definitely a professional at this now, <laughs> like the most You've professional. It. You've done it. <laughs> You're making it. I I hope so. So um, I'll do the awkward little welcome. Welcome to Yelling at Birds. This is Matt here. I am with Hannah, who has been kind enough to take time out of her busy schedule of school and cooking and work and everything else and boyfriend to talk to me all right yeah so hannah yeah speaking of cooking you've been doing like a lot of cooking lately yeah what's, actually, up, what's up with that um i started doing hello fresh which is probably the best decision i've ever made because i enjoy cooking but the worst thing is going online now and trying <clears throat> to find like new recipes because it's those recipes are from women and men that all they do is talk about how much they cook for their families and okay. how they like, they're like, I quit my job in spring of 2016 and now I'm a mother of four and it's just like a life story book and I'm like, I really just want <laughs> to learn how to make chicken here. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. So um, but HelloFresh, you get... Um, you can either, I think the smallest thing is you can get three meals a week. We do four. Okay. And then they send you little cards about how to cook it. And then it's packaged meat and in like your produce and everything else is in these little paper bags. And it just cuts down on food waste. I'm not throwing things away that I don't need. I usually have like leftovers the next day to eat for lunch. And it's like really cheap and my plating skills have gotten pretty good uh, i have to say i noticed yeah those everything looks photos. great yeah i take so get... my storage on my phone is just it's not there anymore because i'm just like trying to get angles of food <laughs> it's just food porn now yeah that's just that's is what it is, is. Awesome. Did you have a favorite favorite meal to eat when when you were a kid? Oh yeah. So it's weird. Like everything when you're a kid, you kind of come up with things, but my brother and I we used to eat kluski and meatballs. Kluski is like this little I don't even know what kind of noodle it is. It's not like an egg noodle or anything like that, but it's a dense little noodle. And then we would use the mom's meatloaf from festival, make meatballs, and then oh, nice. smother it with gravy. And like sometimes we would put corn in it. And it's just a messy hot dish Ooh. that I would, I seriously would eat it every day of my life if I could. Yeah. But I don't go there. Why not? But <laughs> it's the weirdest thing that I but it's my favorite meal it is yeah. absolutely my favorite meal kluski and meatballs or just if you're not that brave just the mom's meatloaf from festival changes my life mm. perfect Especially do you still with, this is, do you still eat that these days like if you ever need like serious comfort food oh yeah if I'm feeling it if like finals are coming up I'm just like meatloaf we need something I need to feel like a child again. Right. I need to feel joy. Absolutely. I love it. So who would normally, when was like the first time you had that? Was that um, like parents making it? I think it was my mom making it. Just trying to make it work. My mom, um, it was after my mom and dad got divorced actually. And I think my mom was just holding it again together just enough to sure. get us by and it was um meatloaf a lot and then um the chicken fried rice was a big one that we did yeah and both i really enjoy now so i like the i but i don't know what they do to make that meatloaf taste so good if anyone that's listening knows the recipe for the 
for the meatloaf festival loaf, foods festival. people <laughs> help me out maybe like if someone like had to got fired from festival and and were like upset and disgruntled and wanted to yes. share it please you know but like just That's... share it with me you know you yeah. don't have to go all out right you don't have you to don't tell everybody too many bridges i want you to get fired <laughs> again but like so somewhere a girl <laughs> right right that's awesome. And that's, yeah, those simple, like kind of simple, filling, good meals. Oh, yeah. That, how, how old was, how old were you when that happened, when your parents split up? Um, I think I was going into second grade. So okay. I didn't really know what was going on. My brother is four years older. He knew what was going on. I just knew that people were like upset and people were crying and I didn't really know what was going on. But my parents did really well with the um, time spent with each parent. Yeah. So it would be like Monday, Tuesday with my dad, Wednesday, Thursday with my mom, and then uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday with my dad. And then it would switch. Okay. So, um, and they lived like maybe three blocks away from each other. Oh, okay. Do it they... wasn't like, like no Did... one moved crazy right. far away. It wasn't like that. And then they both like fell in love and now they're remarried and it's been like, you know, 18 years of them being Shh. together with their person now. And I think... Okay. It, it doesn't, I think a lot of people had bad experiences with divorce and stuff and being a child of divorced parents, but I don't see myself as one of those kids. Okay. You're able to look back and, and well, yeah, I don't know. I was, I was going to assume something there. Yeah. Um, so for, so I, for those of us that haven't had that experience, you know, what, what was it like having those kind of, I'm here with mom on these days, I'm here with dad on these days? Um, in the beginning, you know, it was just, I, it was tough for me to be away from my mom. I remember that I would cry, call her a lot crying. Hmm. I did go to therapy therapy is number okay. one for me like if anything's going on i have my therapist's cell phone number and i'm just like i need an appointment now because i've learned to you know um your friends are good to talk to but your friends and family and other people just have biases i've told my friends this i've told my boyfriend this i'm i'm your girlfriend i'm your friend i i'm always gonna love you more than a therapist will you know I have right. more invested in this than I um, can't give you good advice. I've got rose-colored glasses towards you. I can't do that. Right. But I remember it being tough being away from my mom. And I remember my uh, remember watching movies a lot with both of them. I think that's kind of how we we decompressed a lot. My mom, my dad would watch movies. My mom would play cards with me and I still play cards with my boyfriend. Like every night we play yeah. Rummy 500 and now we're playing King's Corners, which is a, it, it's an easy game. It was the first one kind of my mom taught me, but it's just a glorified sorting of cards. <laughs> but now right. we, we've, made points for it and like made it an actual game and that's what we do before we go to bed and i go to bed at uh like nine o'clock i i'm i'm oh, i I'm wish early to bed early riser sure i do not like to stay up late at all well beds i mean bed's so comfortable I love bed. bed. Bed always wants you back. Yeah. Bed's always warm. I also have <laughs> a heated blanket, so I'm pampered. Mm, yeah. Yeah. 
So that's kind of cool to have that have that kind of routine with your boyfriend. Um, kind of a good time to just decompress for the day, get yourself yeah. ready for bed. Yeah, and talk. not, you know, try to find something on TV or like something new or rewatch <laughs> Parks and Rec in the office and all this other stuff that you've seen a million times and you can quote. Which is right. fun in its own right, but it's it gave us something new to do together. Right. I think that's very important. Yeah. Do you know, and so your parents, they're both uh, remarried, happy, good? Yes, yes. Nice. How does that make you feel? Good. I, I've seen a lot of people in my life that... Um, I definitely think that people get married way too early in life and they haven't found their right person. And throughout, after the divorce, they actually found their person because they're mm -hmm. actually, I'm, I'm not saying that people that get married early are destined to be doomed, but I don't think you're mature enough or you know your person, you enough right. to know what you really want. And now my best friend's parents they got divorced and now they're with their person and it's been like 15 years and all this other stuff and my parents have been i think it's close to 20 years now that they've been together and stuff like awesome. that so yeah i'm uh, i'm good with the no marriage thing or like get married really really late in life because <laughs> It's a whole hell of a lot of money to back out of that one, you know? Right, right. And a lot of turmoil, and I think that it just, to add lawyers and, you know, outside forces, it becomes more of a, a fight that it doesn't need to be. Right. I kind of see it as, so I, I don't have experience with that either. But as you're talking about that, like, you know, too young, finding your person, that kind of stuff, I kind of see it as, like, I think about it in, like, sports terms, like baseball, let's say. Some people are ready to play professionally out of high school, and they get yeah. drafted out of high school. Yeah. Some people, if they got drafted out of high school, they would be shitty, their career would be over before they knew it, because they just didn't know themselves, their body their skills, how to hone in on those certain things. Yeah. And I think like getting married is like playing for the Yankees or playing for, you know, a professional ball team and trying to do it like out of high school. And maybe you didn't even play baseball in high school and you're just like, well, I'm just going to walk on and see if I can uh, <laughs> have a good major league <laughs> career here. Let's try this one out. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I think you and I are, are kind of on the same path as far as, like I was thinking about it earlier this morning, of like La Crosse, Wisconsin, class of whatever, um, of finding yourself as a human being. And I feel, like, I feel like we're in school, like we've been in sc like quote unquote school together for the last like what, two, three years yeah. of kind of growing and developing and like learning about ourselves. And I'm, you're like, you're like 18 years old and I'm 35. I'm like 50, but it happens at different times at diff oh, for yeah. different people. Oh, yeah. And it, there's no, like, I think the biggest thing for me was... She's not 18 years old, by the way. <laughs> God, I wish. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm turning the big 2-9 here soon. Whoa. Yeah, whoa. You don't, I still you don't even have a 3 yet? I, no. <laughs> Jesus. But I do have that baby face going, and I'm going to keep riding that train for a long time, if I can. Absolutely. For sure. My favorite game is Guess My Age, and I love the people, like the new kids that work with me, and they're like, oh, like 22, I'm like, thanks. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Aww. I'm just a little older than you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just, my big thing with like learning about myself and pretty much everything is I have a fear of failure so great inside me that I would learn something about myself and feel like it, if it was, even if it was good or bad or 
how I was feeling, I would think it as a failure. That's why I would like stay in relationships that weren't good mm. for me at all. But yeah. the fear of failing that was greater than the shit I was going through in the relationship. And I have to let that go. Right. Like, that was not healthy for anyone involved, especially me, you know, being like, well, this, yeah. can't, this can't fail, then I'm a failure. No, a relationship can fail. And it doesn't matter. It Sometimes there's two people that are good people, but they're bad for each other. Right. And that's what I've learned. I think that was my last relationship before this one was like, I don't really, I don't blame him for this kind of stuff. But together we were just oil and water. We just did not vibe at all. Right. And I was like, I have to get out of this relationship. I have to. It was actually, this is the, it was actually my boyfriend now that uh, was like, I can't be friends with you if you, if this keeps going on. Like he kept being kind of a sh shitty boyfriend and I was like bitching about it. And he goes, I can't keep hearing about this if you're not going to change your behavior. And I was like, dude, yeah. I don't know what this pull is towards you, but you're right. You're absolutely right. And I think that was the, my friends, it was my friends always pushing that, like, this person isn't good for you. And I'm like, well, whatever, we're having fun. We're, we're you know, we're just figuring right. it out. But in my mind, I was like, you're right. But I have this intense feeling of if I fail this relationship, my whole person is a failure. Right. And you're That's, kind of double or triple punishing yourself. Yes. Because you're in, you're putting all that weight in your shoulders, you're in a relationship and you're punishing yourself by staying there while it's bad for you. And mm -hmm. then also while it's bad for you, blaming yourself for it being bad. Yep. Map. That's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a one that, uh, um, and then also like talking with my boyfriend now, before we were even dating, he, um, he ha he made me do this realization and I don't even know how it came about, but he was just like, you know why you're so comfortable being single? It's because you've been in these crappy relationships where you're single plus one, like they're not right. even engaged in your life at all you're just taking care of yourself with another person and i was like damn these truths man yeah <laughs> shit <laughs> it sucks well, but it yeah it, it sucks to know that um things are not your fault but also that you have toxic traits too. Mm -hmm. that, that you are not always the victim and you can put trash into the world as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, you know, it's not your traumas and things that happen to you in your life aren't always your fault, but they're, it's always your responsibility how you react to them and move forward from them. Yeah. Um, and I could see just kind of visualizing, and this isn't like talking about you, yeah. um, but I could see how just like allowing, you know, the bad relationship to continue as you know it's bad, then that's affecting you and that's affecting everyone you interact with that, well, like um, your boyfriend put it or your friend at the time put it, uh, I can't continue interacting with you if because obviously, you know, that was probably hearing what you're struggling through and him kind of seeing how that was affecting you. I'm, that was, you know, he, he voiced his concern that yeah. that's something he didn't want to be associated with or be yeah. around. Yeah. And that was the big thing too, where my friends would just say it's bad. 
you know? Right. They would still be my friends, and it was kind of not accelerating, but still putting your foot on the gas for the relationship. They weren't saying, right. like, I'm not going to hang out with you if you keep hanging out with this person. But he was, like, the first person to be like, I, I can't be your friend. And I was like, oh, shit. I'm going to yeah. lose this person that really became a close friend really quick like really quick and that's I think that's why we're doing so well in a relationship to be honest we're coming up on three years now and it feels like the first six months every day like that's that's incredible it's it's just the best relationship I've ever been in um but I think that was the big kicker like even my friend who I've been friends with since like second grade she didn't be, even do that like if she was the first right. one to do that i probably would have been out sooner but it's hard to put your foot down with these people you know it's hard to be like i can't watch you go through this right now right and it's the maturity of doing that but also saying like i can't be here right now And I'm doing this with my friend right now, and it's really tough because he's another person that I very much love, and he's been a big part of my life for, like, 11 years now. But I'm saying I can't be with you right now because of this relationship. But if it ever ends or if we reconnect without this this person that you're with, I'm not going to tell you I told you so that's not my place Mm -hmm. you know and that's also not mature you know to be like i told you so like we're not we're not 16 this isn't you know your (laughs) your homecoming date kissed another person or something you know this is right this is a bit more you know i think they've been together for a couple of years now that's that's a big thing that's a big decision but it's tough it's tough seeing your friend declining right in front of you yeah and knowing you can't do kind of jack shit about it but your presence you know you can say i'm i'm out for now but i'm still your friend right right and that's i think that that's something that doesn't get enough like um exposure to is we can we can quote unquote like be there for somebody to support somebody in a bad way too yeah. and that's well like any you know bad relationship any any person going through like addiction or anything like that it's you know that maturity to have that tough love that you know that you're still supporting this person but you know i have to look out for my own life because i'm living my life too and i can't be a part of this or i can't be around this if this is what you're going to do yeah and with like so what we talk about in um recovery meetings is you know i could have all the best advice all of the best experience all of the best things to say to somebody but if they don't want to get better if they don't want to quit whatever they're doing I can't force them to yeah and having that like strong conversation with a friend saying that you know i know this is what i'm seeing if you don't if you don't want to make that choice right now i can't be a part of the a part of this and that was super mature of your boyfriend too now yeah (laughs) that was like very mature yeah have we said his have we said his name yet can we yeah we can his name is seth yeah yeah he's my best hey seth (laughs) <laughs> like, Seth is awesome. He's the best, the best boy ever. Mm-hmm. And um, he's very much the logical bit brain part of this relationship. I'm definitely run on emotions, and he's called me okay. out on it a lot. But it's <laughs> always come together. We've had like in depth conversations way past my bedtime about things. So like nine thirty. Um, yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> By like nine forty five, I'm like. I need, I got, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> um, but he, he definitely puts me in my place, but 
also it's respectfully you know (laughs) it's just it's a whole different level of being like you gotta think before you do things and i'm like what it's this thinking thing what (laughs) i'm run by you know what's what's beating in in my chest right now like i feel something and i it's impulsive it's an impulse for me and he goes breathe step back and then think about it and i'm like okay i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying (laughs) but i also like get him out of the house where i'm like we're gonna go do something and he's like what are we what i'm like yeah we're gonna follow follow our emotions right now and it's you know i like to think that i'm the fun person (laughs) well it sounds like a good balance very good balance i am i'm just enamored by the fact that i found this person and we used to like work together (laughs) right yeah it was great that's super great well because yeah i think i was I was probably one of those, you know, people that we talked here and there and um, like to see, to think back to, you know, some of the messages and conversations we would have years ago versus like what I see like you two post and talk about today is like incredible. Like that change has been like, yeah, like I'm always like, I'm always proud of you. But I'm like super fucking proud of you right like now, like for just that continual, you know, growth. Yeah. Well, it, would, it used to be just like I would because I knew my ex was just he was very much cheating on me throughout the whole thing and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And it was almost territorial where I was just like posting online pictures of me and him being like. Oh my God, everyone just back off. He's my boyfriend and stuff like that. But now I just right. post pictures because I'm like, I got him a fucking lightsaber for Christmas and <laughs> goofing off about it. And like in the middle of the night, I'll just hear vroom, vroom, vroom. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's because we love each other. Not because yeah. I'm like, I don't know, protecting him from other women or other people it's just like we don't even have our relationship status on facebook right it's, just, it's not needed it's not uh it's never really even crossed my mind to be like you need to put it on facebook it's mm-hmm. already there it's in our house it's in our text messages it's the fact that he called me at like nine o'clock today to talk to me for 20 minutes and stuff like that yeah so it's different and i hope everyone finds their person i think that's the whole point i know yeah (laughs) and he does the same stuff too like you're posting like fun things like things Uh that are like well this was nice i wanted to capture this but like you're not the only one doing that like i see him do the same thing which is that's super cool yeah like today we're getting it's the last episode of 90 day fiance and we're like jacked about it it's on sundays it happens at 8 p.m you guys and it's just drama filled and we love it that's what we do on (laughs) sundays and he works every other weekend so when he works, it's um, phone calls during the day and stuff like that. We'll come together. We'll cook. I'll cook dinner, um, and then we'll watch the 90 Day Fiance. The best thing is when he doesn't work on weekends. He like makes me pancakes every day. Every mm. morning he makes me pancakes, and the boy is good at making pancakes. Like, nice. They're so good. How does he do it? <laughs> I don't know. Brilliant. I like it. Yeah. Um, so what kind of, I don't know, like this, I don't, I have a few other things I, I'd wanted to talk about, but I don't know that I want to, I don't know if I want to go there anymore because. Well, this we is, can totally go there because I got nothing else to do but homework. So like, <laughs> waste my time. It's fine. 
No, I don't uh, have that much homework, but yeah, like, go for it. So, um, so you're here now. Before that, let's talk about um, a few of the things that. So you you've been through a lot. Yeah. I feel um, through kind of our conversations. We've talked. Um, yeah, we've talked about. What talked was you? <laughs> yeah, bef before like this, I guess let's say like this is like a new era of your life, I would say. Yeah. The post Seth meeting. Um, what were like the main things that you would, other than your kind of uh, ex, you know, your old relationships, like what were you kind of, what did you see yourself struggling with the most? Um, I think the biggest thing was um, the internal failure thing. It's just always been a big, big driver in my life. But also the biggest thing that set me back was um, in the beginning in high school and stuff, I, was, I wasn't like, you know, straight A student, but I was like A, Bs and stuff like that, except for math. Don't, oh God. I'm, we won't go I, there. I get... C's and I'm happy that I passed the class at this point. Sure. Um, but I really like I was thinking about doing a two year college and just getting it out of the way and just starting a career. But then I had all these other people in my life kind of pushing for a four year and I was just like the internal failure and then the outward failure of like disappointing people pushed me into a four-year college and it was I won't say that it was horrible but it wasn't for me and sure. where I went was like I came from a big city and all these other people I have friends there I'm not saying that everyone was terrible but it was very close-minded and coming from a big city and then you know the the mind blowing thing of my mom marrying another woman was just outlandish to people that sure. I became exiled out of groups and other things. And I didn't feel like I fit in. And then I was in the equine program, which is horses, but I wasn't, it was a small school and I wasn't wanting, I wasn't trying to be a vet. And a lot of these other people were trying to be vets and it became mm. like a competition for grades and other things. And I was just like, I don't really enjoy this at all. And it was way up north, it was cold. And I was just like, what's going on here? Right. And at the time, once again, had a very, it was my boyfriend during like kind of high school and then it was during college off and on and he was controlling and just like, um, he was the one that really pushed the whole like, if you don't finish college and if you don't stay with this relationship or anything like that, if I did anything wrong, it was, you're the worst person, you're ugly inside and out, you're, and it just kept beating me down and down and down. And then it, 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 I got out of it and I was like, oh, thank God. And then I met this other person and he was struggling with his own demons. He was the former Marine and he had severe PTSD. And then my last year that I was going to go to college, he committed suicide and I said, I can't go. I can't go back to school. I can't be up there. That's too much pain. That's too right. much. This place has already been a shadowy kind of um, mess of a life up there. I didn't get bad grades. I wasn't a bad student, but everything else was just terrible. Right. That I was like, I can't do it. So I gave up on school for a while. I wouldn't say I gave up. It was always back in my mind that I would finish 
and stuff like that. I took a break from school. <laughs> yeah. And I went back to therapy. Always with the therapy. Mm -hmm. um, because I became suicidal at that point. I, every time I would get into a car or something, or I would just be like, could I drive off right there and would I die? Because yeah. that's what I wanted to do <laughs> at that point. Just, and then I, yeah. So you had like so. constant, the, those constant intrusive thoughts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, well, what if I just did this? Yeah. Yeah. What if I slipped my wrist? What if I mm -hmm. took all the pills in my pill cabinet? Which is like, I don't, <laughs> I have like ibuprofen. I don't really have, <laughs> you know, I don't have the glamorous pills that, you know, the movies put you. Put like, what, if you I, what if I ate all these Flintstone vitamins? Yeah. What would happen? My pee would, would turn have... a different color. <laughs> whoa um but those thoughts do were occurring and i was yeah. like i am not in a place to do anything but go to work and work on myself so school was off the table at that point mm -hmm. and everything else so i went to therapy for probably i would say a year and a half and it was I think every other week I would go to a therapist. And I even had, you know, people in my life come to therapy with me. I think my mom did go to one appointment and a few other, like my friends and other people did mm -hmm. to, you know, really talk to me about what my experience is and what other people's experiences are in the same you know, in the same area of their lives is completely different. And yeah. I think people get lost in that where your experience is not like anyone else's. And to really kind of say, this is what's going on in my life. And people saying, I didn't even realize it's kind of the, the biggest thing that can hurt you because you thought that people could see that right but it, it's not their experience so you can't you can't hold it against them to be like i didn't even know that you were struggling mm -hmm. you gotta talk to people no absolutely <laughs> it's that whole idea of well that you're the star of your own show or you're the star of your own play yeah and that uh, that idea that we forget we forget that you know every single person in the world is living a life as like vibrant and full of experiences and emotions that we are yeah but we don't but we don't see that yeah because we just you know pass them on the street and say hello but that but we all have our own well we're we're the only people living our lives and we have our own separate dreams hopes and desires and everything um, I think that's like super important. And that was, so going to, going back to therapy, was that, um, did you have people in your life talking to you about that or did, as part of that decision or yes. did you just know that that was what you needed? No, no. They, I definitely in the beginning, I was just like, I don't need that and stuff like that. But my, my stepmom is a therapist <laughs> and she, mm. Um, she referred me to one of the women that she used to work with. And then my mom also was just like, you should think about therapy. So my family was a big, big push towards it. Okay. And I'm so glad that someone was like, just do it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know. It's also that I don't know why so many people look not in my life I haven't seen it but in other people that I know of people look down on other people for going to therapy and I think that really needs to stop <laughs> right needs well it's, it's the idea that like well no I'm a strong person I don't need help or I don't need what xyz but I think we all like 
when we're at the end of our end of the line, we're not going to, I don't think we're going to die a prouder death because we were able to carry all the emotional weight yeah. we had. There's no need, there's no need for that. Yeah. There's not and, one person being like, I didn't go to therapy once. And it's like, yeah, oh. I just dragged this like million pound anchor behind me my entire life. Yeah. yeah. And I could have, and that's the biggest thing, like, um, start living a better life right now yeah. and whatever you need to do to get that. And therapy is definitely one of those things. And I think it's, um, being in a space where you said, okay, and you went in, but also having those like close friends and family go in too, that's huge. Yeah. Like being able to, or being willing to include them is I think a super, you know, um, mature decision to make and a very healthy decision to make. Yeah. We have to change the mindset of people because I was, I listened to NPR a lot every yeah. time I'm in the car. And I heard about how um, prison systems are the main reason people or the main uh, place where people get mental health care provided yeah. to them. And I'm like, that's, that should be the last <laughs> place that people get it first you know we have to make it affordable and available for everyone to use therapy or mental health you know assistance and stuff like that it should not be you shouldn't have to go to prison to talk to someone <laughs> right right that's a, that's, yeah, that, that's a better way to put it, I think. Yeah. Um, but I, and I think that, well, just like, uh, maternal, paternal leave, uh, mental health care, like we're not to get like political or anything, but we're, we're way behind. Yeah. And that should just be, first of all, like socially acceptable. Yeah. It should be socially acceptable for a mother to get a bunch of time off after having a child and, and a father to, you know, make, build that connection. Yeah. But like, it should be socially acceptable to realize that, Hey, it's healthy to talk about, talk about what's going on in an open and honest and like comfortable setting. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want that? Mm -hmm. We're all, we're all figuring out. There's like no, there's no instruction manual for being a human being. Plus the rules of the game cha change, change, you know, every decade at least. Yeah. It's things are different. Something, you know, this morals change thing, you know, other than like the base, like probably don't murder anybody and try not to steal and, and yeah. cheat and lie and things like that. Um, so looking back, so the person you are right now, mm -hmm. how, how like happy and proud or person you are right now, looking back on the person you were before you went to therapy when you had to stop going to school. Um, how, how do you feel about the choices that you've made that put you where you are right now? Um, I think I, I did, um, better than I would have done. Um, I picked up some bad habits before that I started smoking, which was not, I didn't think that would ever happen to me, but also nicotine is a bitch. It's so tough mm. to quit smoking. A lot of hooks. Oh yeah. I, I've quit, you know, probably eight times for, you know, my longest time was I think like eight months to almost a year and then I slip back into it. Um, now I just do a vape. I do okay. a jewel. Um, so I'm, I feel like this is the crutch that I'm going to try to use to quit it all. Sure. Um, because I went back to smoking again and I think that's the big one that I've, I've really hold held on to not because I want to, but I'm also very, it's addictive, you know, but that's right. the one thing where I'm like, that's hasn't really changed, but everything else really has been better. Like, yeah. Way better. 
Um, I don't think I would be at the same place if I didn't go to therapy and I didn't have the strong family and friends that I do right now. I cut right. out a lot of people out of my life. And that wasn't like, uh, I, I didn't really cut people out. I just let them go because right. I was the one texting them. I was the one being like, let's hang out. Let's do these things. And finally I was like, they got to put some effort into this. And if they're not, I, you know, like, what's the point, you know, if, if they're right. not really gung ho about this friendship or relationship, I, I don't know. I was just like, so I lost, I cut out. I lost a lot of friends, but I don't feel it was a bad decision on my part. Mm -hmm. These people. So looking now, I, I, I have friends on Facebook. I talk to them, but like I have, one snap snapchat group of four people and then like my boyfriend <laughs> and that and then my family that's and, and jordy uh, and jordy <laughs> jordan he's he is it's my snake just so everyone knows but he's about almost four pounds now he's whoa fat. he's a big boy he's big he did not eat yesterday i think um, we tried to have one of our friends through um, uh, FaceTime watch him eat, and I think he got a little shy, and and he didn't perform. <laughs> okay, that happens. Yep, it does. Happens so, to all snakes. Now he's, yeah, people are like, are you going to live feed him? And I was like, <laughs> no, because one time I shook it too fast. Cause it's I use frozen so I kind of make it seem like it's alive and stuff like that and I shook it too fast and it booped him on the nose and he got scared and ran away <laughs> and hid for about 15 minutes and I was like nope never going to try to feed him a live thing because sure. he'll just have a panic attack so he's he's a baby he's yeah he's pampered. adorable yeah I never thought I would fall in love with a reptile. Well, he's not a reptile. He's a snake, but still. I never yeah. thought... I, I liked snakes. You know, I thought they were really neat, and that's why I got one. But I never thought I would be like... He's like my child, and I yeah. didn't think that was going to happen. But <laughs> I I do love that. do love that animal. And he's just so cute. He's adorable. He's yeah. absolutely adorable. It's very photogenic. It's big time. Like boops all day long. Oh, boops. <laughs> I'm staring oh, boy. at him right now. Oh, he's... nice. Oh, I love him. Well, Hannah, I think that I can let you go and do some homework. Oh, God. I'm ready. Thank you. For... I'm ready. I... <laughs> Seriously, I really appreciate you being here and uh, giving me some of your time, telling me about your story. As always, I am super proud of you. I love you. I want I want you to continue this and continue being happy. I love hearing everything about you and Seth. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me. I'll yep. I'll send you photos of Jordan. So Please you can, do. Can upload. I'll share it to the page. Share it, Jordan. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right. Bye. Well, you have a great day, Hannah. You too. Bye. Bye.